for the motion. Your time starts Your time starts now. Empowering an individual means empowering the nation. And empowerment can be best served through a radical reset. Setting a futuristic vision that is skill-based learning. As an upshot, creating the very foundation of a knowledge economy. A very good morning, one and all present here. Today, I, Ananta Patra, representing Team E, stand before you to speak for the motion. Will skill-based learning transform India into a knowledge economy? The youth of today, drivers of tomorrow's economy, have to be taught to protect and act upon the very first pillar of a knowledge economy. That is, upskilling the population of India through inclusive growth, so that the dream that every person of India becomes an asset and not a liability, but the social economic strength of India getting uplifted, finally comes true. And the skilled workforce realizes the dreams of the intellectual minds, thereby proving that our destination is knowledge economy and the path that we have to follow is definitely going to be skill based learning. I ask everyone who's present here what if the entire human resource of India is trained to develop the leadership skills, communication skills, adaptability skills, problem solving skills, and creative skills? What if India upskills the people even at the grassroots level of the country? This idea of skill-based learning might sound utopian to all of you. So let me cite some real-life instances that prove how fruitful has skill development turned out for what we call the knowledge economy. Starting off, countries like Switzerland, Sweden, Finland and Denmark that use the potential of every individual of that country rank top overall in the know-how player of the knowledge economy. Furthermore, the National Education Policy 2020 marked the revolutionary change, shifting the focus to skill-based learning, which not only minimizes the social stigma attached to taking up a skill as a career, but also exposes the youth to multiple career paths, including entrepreneurship. In fact, through the second phase of the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikash Yojana scheme, nearly 68.2 lakhs of rural women had undergone skill training, due to which they got more financial stability, predictability, and independence. What we need today are not only well informed minds, but also well reformed minds. For example, late Mr. Dhirubhai Amani, Sushil Jundimbala, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, and the list goes on and on and on. These were the people that proved that to set an example, one has to be an example first. Likewise, if we really need to policies into execution at the raw and downtrodden parts of the country, then skill-based learning by the audience is definitely going to be a boom for the knowledge economy. How long will the disease fester in India that society expects creating a manpower that is jack of all trees and not the master of one? Why can't we have a skill-driven manpower that is tailored to the job market, tailored to the needs of the people, tailored to the need of the hour? Skill-based learning by the audience is the demand of the hour and unquestionably a revolution in itself. The illiterates of 21st century won't be those who cannot read or write, but those who cannot skill, reskill, and upskill themselves. And I hereby cement my thoughts by saying that skill-based learning will undoubtedly, unarguably, and assuredly transform India into a powerful knowledge economy. Thank you very much. For the question to the speaker. Good morning, everyone. Today, I, Ishpal Singh, feel honored to introduce myself as the interjector from Team D. Informed speaker, 
you enunciated mildly the policies and schemes. NEP 2020, PM Scotia's Vikas Yojana, to name a few. To take skill based learning as a tool for sculpting India as a knowledge economy. But how do you advocate the accessibility, affordability, and above all, the accountability of such idealistic approaches? Thank you for that wonderfully intriguing question. First of all, yes, I stay firm and adamant to my stand that skill-based learning will undoubtedly transform into a non economy As we embark on our journey to transform India into a real superpower, economically and intellectually, we have seen that there have been real-life instances that prove how fruitful has skill development made a major impact on what we call the non economy? Just like how Nepal employed the students for Ayurvedic Panchkarma uh, and that faced 100% employment rate. I would also like to draw the kind attention of my worthy opponent that a human turns into a resource with the right skill development. And here, I am talking about every individual of the country that could be an asset, who will not only contribute in the financial economy, but also the development of knowledge. And once this is achieved, then the development of intangible assets that includes intellectual property leading to knowledge economy will no longer be just a project, a mission, or a dream, but will turn into a reality through skill-based learning. Thank you, my dear friend. To team E, speaking against the motion. Your time starts now. To handle can what God had once said. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Willing is not enough. We must do. Good morning, one and all present here. Today I am Kupali Sukhati of Team E, firmly stand against the motion. Will skill-based learning transform India into a knowledge economy? The second largest country, fifth largest economy, and the second most populous country of the world is India. And this must be a well-known fact. But how many of us have ever heard of the UNDP's Global Knowledge Index? Well, as a matter of fact, India is ranked 83rd out of 123 countries, according to the latest report of 2021. What's ironic here is that this is the condition of the country where the Dakshin and Nalanda University was set up, where the pioneers of knowledge such as Aragorn, Sushma, Kautilya, and so many others were born. So what went wrong? Why are we not one of the leading knowledge economies of the world? Dear audience, with tall India wishes to regain its lost status as the golden bar, it has to keep up with the leading knowledge economies such as Switzerland, Sweden, and the United States of America. And to achieve that, skill-based learning alone will not be the most crucial factor in its foundation, as it increases chances of procrastination. It is not suitable for either fast-paced needs or future needs. And most importantly, skill without knowledge is like a robot in the hand of a master who can manipulate you and restrict your role to that of a laborer or a worker. These factors combined prove that skill-based learning will be a major impediment for India's transformation into a knowledge economy. Moreover, the World Bank defines knowledge economies according to four pillars. First, Institutional structures for entrepreneurship and the use of knowledge. Second, availability of skilled labor and a good education system. Third, access to ICT infrastructures and fourth, a wide range innovation landscape that includes the academia, the private sector, and civil society. For India to achieve its objective, work on all these four pillars have to be of utmost importance. And knowledgeforall.com has already laid down the areas of strength India has to call the bite upon, such as building quality control, cultural goods export, research institutions, prominence, funds that spend on R&D, as well as tertiary graduates from STEM programs. As 
matter of fact, 43% of STEM graduates in India are females. And this number is far higher than in the US, UK and France. Apart from that, we have to put an end to the brain drain. As to third opinions of migrate abroad are highly educated, according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Only then in the next generation of Sundar Pichai's, Sundar Ariyas and Leena Nayas, the CEOs of Google, Microsoft and Chanel respectively, will be able to provide their expertise in fast track and gas transformation. So dear audience, skill based learning is definitely not the transformative factor. Rather, consistent efforts in the right direction at the right time with futuristic vision is what will turn India into a knowledge economy. With that, I would like to end by saying that our knowledge economy is no longer a distant dream. India won't be known as the laborer factory of the world, but as a country where everyone is empowered in their own right. Thank you very much. To note that we are allowed to ask only one question per speaker. You may now begin. Worthy speaker, you talked high about India's shortcomings when it comes to the knowledge economy. On the same lines, in a country like India, where unemployment, but more importantly, underemployment as well as disguised unemployment prevail on such a large extent, how exactly do you advocate for any other solution to this core issue other than skill based learning? Thank you for that intriguing question, dear speaker. First of all, I haven't highlighted the shortcomings of the knowledge economy in India, but the path we should most appropriately take. And I would like to share with you a story. In the Mahabharata itself, Krishna, with his legendary prowess in archery, couldn't start the war for 18 days until an unless Lord Krishna, with his intellect, steered him on the right path. In the same manner, in our country, India, which is our motherland, this should be the way how knowledge economy should be achieved. And on that part, I would like to highlight that in a knowledge economy, the creation of the knowledge takes place. And knowledge is unlimited. And it will not only create jobs, but will increase the quality of life of everyone. Knowledge is what guides the manpower to certain aspects. And that will, in turn, help India to achieve its position in the world, which is something quite possible. Especially in the field of research and development itself, we have seen that in the DRDO, I know many of you know about DRDO, the Agni missile was developed indigenously from the hearts and minds of our people alone. That made us prominent enough in the world that nowadays we are collaborating with Russia for the Brahmos missile too. So it shows that research and development works properly and only when knowledge, ideas, opinions of a wide range of people will come together, only then the management of the worst manpower resources our country has, its youth, will be steered in the right direction. And I would like to end my answer by saying something that I've seen in my principal sir's group, a quote by Abhijit Abdul Kalam. He will keep the vision of knowledge burning in India forever. He was our 11th president. And I believe we all, as brothers and sisters, should work together to that common vision and keep his legacy forever in our hearts and minds. Thank you. For the question to the speaker. Good morning, one and all present here. Today I, Punya Shlok, stand before you all as a projector of Dean E. First of all, thank you for that beautifully crafted speech. In your speech, you have mentioned that the skill based learning transformed India into a knowledge economy. What are their positive aspects? So let's take the example of China, the world's largest vocational education system, where every year the government invests more than 15 billion US dollars for skill development. And the government of India, on the contrary, invests less than 300 billion dollars for the same. So with such low capital investment, how do you even dream to build a strong and effective skill-based education system in the country with the world's largest youth population? Thank you. Thank you for your question. First of all, thank you for that wonderful speech. In your speech, you have mentioned about the drawbacks of skill-based learning. 
But India is the world's second most populous country with the world's largest youth population and 75% of its total population at its working age. Providing job to this humongous population on the basis of conventional lending appears far fetched. So don't you think that on this juncture, skill-based learning plays a very crucial role in making Indian economy dynamic where everyone, everyone contributes in the growth and development of our nation? For the motion. For the motion. That was again Pumi Sukriti Dupe of ATS Maybe he had the runners up too. Where is Bunnuski? Where is Bunnuski? Where is Bunnuski?